Hello, yogis. Welcome to the 60-minute slow vinyasa class. Today, we're going to play with a little bit of arm balances, and there is Ekapada uh, Raha Kapotasana. It's pigeon pose, but we're going to do a flying pigeon, which is a nice uh, way to connect our last series that we did on the mindful self-care yoga on how to crow. So we're gonna break it down into three series for this one. It's a fun pose. Uh, we're gonna start nice and slow, warming up the body, getting the body ready for it, strong muscles. Second series is gonna be using more props. And then the third series will be see what happens, just like we did with the uh, crow pose. So welcome and I hope you are as excited as I am. Let go of expectation, have fun through the practice, and let's just go into our breath. So take a moment there to close your eyes. Notice and witness your breath, the quality of the breath. Remember that in our asana practice, the connection of our mind with our breath is crucial for us to stay calm, focused, and balanced. So feel free to lengthen that inhale a little bit more. And exhale. And just soften in any tension you might feel anywhere in the body, which could be in multiple areas. And just soften your jaw, your shoulders, your chest. And just notice how your abdomen perhaps also gently expand as you breathe in. Breathe out. Good, and then you can Keep your eyes closed or you can open it at this point. I want to warm up a little bit the hips and um, I'm sorry, I want to warm up the spine and the core. So we're going to reach the arms overhead as you take your next inhale, interlace the fingers with the palms and grow a little taller and start to draw the lower abdomen in. Do a little gentle side bend and as you do the side bend, press your ribs to the left and keep the heart open. And slowly come back to center. Take an inhale, grow taller. As you exhale, side into the left, leaning into the right ribs. Come back to center, inhale. As you exhale, twist into the right, one hand in the back, one in the front. Maintain those shoulders above the hips. And then slowly come back to center, inhale. Exhale, opposite side, nice and slow, twist and feeling that lower back. Keep your abdomen drawing in, nice and strong. And slowly come back to center, seated cat cow, hands on your knees, leaning back, round the upper back, dropping the chest, back and the chin down. Inhale, bring the chest forward, squeeze the shoulder blades in, slightly open the throat. Exhale, round and push. Inhale, open, nice and slow. Two more rounds, exhale. Belly, belly is really drawing in. We're gonna start activating the abdomen, warming up the abdomen here. Inhale, open. Last one, exhale, round. So inhale, open. Good, now we're gonna move in circles. So we're gonna bring the chest forward to the left and back. And just add some shoulder here, right? You can bring the shoulders. We're multitasking here a little bit. So you really ground yourself through the legs. And then switch direction, nice and slow. We're just kind of warming up the upper back for the arm balance. We're gonna warm up the core for the strength that we need for the arm balance. Good. Let's go straight into sun salutation. We're gonna do about five full minutes of sun salutation to warm up the whole body, to center the mind with the breath, okay? So let's just do that. 
take your time to go into your downward facing dog. I'm gonna place my blanket over here. Once you're in downward facing dog, take a moment to ground yourself through your feet and your hands. And just notice the stretch of the legs, push the floor away with your hands. And take your time nice and slow, breathing through the nose. And rise the heels, bring it down, lift the toes of the mat, spread your fingers wide. Uh, take an inhale, look forward. As you exhale, roll into your first plank. Adjust your standing without collapsing on the core, without collapsing on the legs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, rise the heels, bring the feet together, bend the knees, look forward. As you exhale, bend the knees, walk or jump to the top of your mat, nice and slow. Bring yourself halfway up, inhale. Lean into the toes, exhale, release, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, reaching the arms overhead, nice and slow, neutralize that pelvis. Exhale, gently release the chest down to your thighs. Inhale, lengthen your spine halfway up. Exhale, hands down, knees are bended. Keep the pelvis low and kick yourself back into plank. Inhale here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's try that again. Inhale, look forward. Get ready to walk or jump as you start exhaling to the top of the mat. Lengthen your spine halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Let's warm up again. Same sequence, halfway up, inhale. Exhale, hands down, stepping back into that plank. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, walk or jump to the top. Lengthen your spine, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, arms reaching up. Exhale, release, forward fold. Lengthen, inhale, halfway. Exhale, lower in the pelvis, kicking the legs one at a time for your plank, inhale. Exhale, drop the knees in here. We're gonna do this variation first, Chaturanga, right? Elbows above the wrist. So you gotta press your chest forward and hips forward. As you bend the elbows back, stay high on the shoulders. Open the heart, inhale. Beautiful, exhale, back to downward facing dog. Okay, so we'll put it all back together for sun salutation A. Some know it as Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend in the knees, strong core. Walk or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urvahasthasana, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Lengthen your spine, inhale, Arva Uttanasana. To exhale, hands down, stepping back to plank, inhale. Exhale, take your variation of Chaturanga Dandasana, tippy toes, strong legs, strong core. Inhale, open. Cobra or up dog, exhale, back to downward facing dog. One more, inhale, look forward. Exhale, walk or jump to the top. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Release forward, full exhale. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. Lengthen your spine, strong legs, engage your upper back. Beautiful, exhale, hands down, stepping back to plank, inhale. 
Exhale, downward face. Chaturanga uh, Dandasana. Inhale, open your heart for cobra. Feel that stretch in the abdomen and the hips. Exhale, back into that downward facing dog. Take two rounds of breath before we do Surya Namaskar B. Regulate the breath, deepen in where you need to, soften in where you have to. Okay, take an inhale, feet together, looking forward. As you exhale, prepare, walk or jump to the top. Lengthen your spine, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose, nice and slow, inhale. Exhale, release, hand back to plank, inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Open your heart, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three-legged dog on the right, inhale. Exhale, right foot forward, left heel drops, lower the pelvis. Warrior one, inhale, arms overhead. Beautiful, exhale, hands down, back into that plank. Keep the pelvis and core engaged. Come into Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, open. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. Three-legged dog on the left, inhale. Exhale, warrior one. Take your time to feel and to land and settle the body in the pose. Very nice. Keep the mind focused in the moment here and now. Exhale, hands down. Back to plank, inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, open. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. Let's close the loop. Inhale, feet together, look forward. Exhale, walk or jump to the top. Lengthen your spine, inhale. Exhale, release. Forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, bend in the knees. Stay here, exhale. Inhale, all the way up. Release the hands at your side. Let's take a moment there. We have done some salutations to activate the cardio, strengthen and stretch the whole body. Connecting with the breath. One more inhale here. Exhale, release the hand, arms overhead, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, back into plank. Inhale, drop the right knee. We're gonna do a variation of side plank. So that, I'm sorry, left knee. Your left knee is in alignment with that left wrist and pivot your right heel. So your left hand, right knee and right, left hand, left knee and right foot in one alignment here. Press your pelvis so your body's in the center of the mat. Rotate the chest and open your right arm. Okay, so if you, I know you can do full plank and full side plank, but bear with me in this variation. Even though you can do side plank with both legs extended, please drop the left knee. The reason being is because I want to be more, I want you to be more aware, more mindful of that left shoulder sinking in here drag it back into the shoulder socket. I want you to be aware of how much of your abdomen and lengthening of the lower back and rotation of the rib cage here. All right, beautiful. Release, back to plank, inhale. So that on the other side, right knee drops, right knee, <laughs> left heel pips, and then find that variation of side plank on the right side. Keep the breath nice and slow. Good release, come back into plank, inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana for four, three, two, and one. Inhale, Cobra. 
Exhale back to downward facing dog. We'll take a moment here. Full inhale. Full exhale. Inhale, three legged dog on the right. Exhale, open. Twist the open hip, downward facing dog. Exhale, extend top leg, square the hips, pigeon pose. Right foot to the left. Extend that back leg strong. Stay here for a moment. Lengthen in your spine. Lean back with the chest. Deep stretch of the left hip flexor. Continue drawing your lower abdomen in. Continue lengthening through the crown of the head and bring the skull towards the back. Observe your breath in your ribcage. Good, and then from here, we're gonna go slowly in reverse. So we're gonna come into that cross pigeon plank and then release back into that three-legged dog and then release to downward facing dog, okay? So we're just taking a baby step, right? We're just preparing the body for a very complex arm balance. And sometimes it's worth to take the time to nourish and prepare the body. There is no rush in yoga. And so there is no rush to leave leg either. <laughs> So three-legged dog on the left, open the hip, stack your knee. Make your right heel heavy, keep pushing on the left hand. Extend top leg, square the hips back into that pigeon. Left knee to the left, left foot to the right. Settle here, we're gonna stay a little high for a couple breaths. Ground yourself through the legs and allow the spine to grow taller. One more inhale. And release, slowly in reverse. And then back to downward facing dog. Inhale, three-legged dog on the right. Exhale, right foot between the hand, left knee drops. Low lunge for a moment, guys. Bring your right hand in, low knees are now. So your right foot is to the edge of your mat. Open your right toes a little bit more to the right. Open that right knee to the right. Walk your hands slightly to the left. Keep pressing equally your pelvis forward and square it. Feel that stretch of the right inner thigh. Good, walk your hands to center, walk your right foot to center. Runner's lunge, right hand outside your right foot. Pelvis back, extending front leg. Inhale, low lunge, opening the chest, hands on the floor. Exhale, leaning back. Good, now open that right leg again into that low leaser. And then coming to that runner's lunge, kicking that right leg out to the side, opening the right toes. We're stretching different side muscles on the leg. One more inhale. Exhale, we bend. From there, lift the back leg nice and slow, high laser. Twist yourself to the right and open that right leg without collapsing on the left leg, without collapsing on that left hip. I know I have these baggy pants, but my back leg is fully engaged. Good, one more inhale. Close that front leg back into that downward facing dog. If you wanna take a vinyasa, please do so very slowly, very mindful. Otherwise, let's rest in downward facing dog for three rounds of breath. Settle in, breathing in. So let's do that on the other side. So take an inhale, left leg up and back. 
Exhale, left foot forward, right knee drops, that low lunge, right? Hands down, open in our chest. Low leaser, left hand in, left foot out. Open in that left toes out, open in that left knee out, walking your hands to the right. Just give yourself a moment to feel that stretch on that left inner thigh. One more inhale. And then slowly walk the hands back to center, back into that low lunge so we can roll back to runner's lunge, half split. Low lunge, half split, low lunge, low laser. Keep that low laser and kicking the pelvis back for this variation of runner's lunge with the left leg on a diagonal. And then we bend, lifting that back leg for that laser a little higher once again. Back leg is really strong, guys. Don't get don't get that uh, full with my baggy pants. Twisting if you want to the left. And release back into downward facing dog or take a vinyasa. We're gonna stay here for a moment. Take your time if you're doing your vinyasa. We're gonna meet in downward facing dog. Ground yourself with your heels, your heels of the wrist, and maybe not the heels of the feet, but maybe the ball of your foot and all your toes. One more inhale. Now as you exhale, come into the dolphin pose. We're gonna come into the forearms. Always a dolphin pose is to help you strengthen the upper back. Right, so if this is a challenging pose, this is exactly where your body might need a little bit more of love and compassion and do as much as the body allows you to. Continue drawing the lower abdomen and if you wanna lift the hips a little higher, go ahead and maybe walk the feet slightly forward. One more breath. And then exhale, drop into your knees, come into child's pose for three rounds of breath. Settle your mind and let go of anything that is out of your control. Good, and then from here we're gonna go into Malasana. So take your time to set yourself there into Malasana. I want you to really get more into the hips. Flying pigeon, it's a very hip opener and a very hip stretch. So it's important that we take the time to nourish the hip joints and engage and learning to engage the spine and the core as one unison that supports the pelvis. One more inhale. Now, as you exhale, we're gonna go down, release, oops, <laughs> down into the back. Release your left leg down, and then we're gonna hop the right leg in. So I'm gonna bring my right foot into the left elbow, and wrap it in there, bring that knee more in, and kick that leg and wrap your right arm around. And you're gonna gently rock side to side. This is what is rocking the baby pose. And be mindful of not hyperextending the ankle. Keep that foot straight and then use the arms to help you stay tall. I'm going to give you my sides just in case. We want to prevent rounding the spine like this. We want to stay nice and tall. So we're pressing ourselves forward. If this is too much, you can just use your left hand and wrap your right hand by your side, okay? Whatever works here. Good, and then we're gonna release that and go into the other side. So your right leg drops. We're gonna hop that left shin in, settle your feet, your hands, your elbows, your spine, 
And you're gonna gently rock side to side. And take your breath with you. Good, and then slowly release. Release the feet in front of you. Pashimottanasana, forward fold to stretch the back of your legs a little bit more here. Good, and then slowly come back up. And so what we're gonna do now is Bharatanasana, heels touch, knees out to the side. It's almost like a cooling time, a warm up in the sequence to prepare us for um, the variation that we're gonna do today is gonna be on our backs. So just keep yourself a couple more breath here. Good, and then when you're ready, close your knees, come into your back. And as you come into your back, hope they're riding into the chest, kicking that left leg in front of you and down to the floor. Relax the shoulders, adjust the chest if you need to. Make sure the spine feels relaxed. We're gonna do that hogging the knee, um, hugging the baby on our backs now. So with your left hand, grab your right foot and open that right knee out to the side. It's almost like you're doing pigeon on your back. Be mindful of that ankle joint here. We don't wanna hyper extend it like so. We wanna keep that foot in alignment with the ankle, okay? Here you can bring your hands underneath and maybe pull it more to the chest. Once again, the right knee is out to the side, left, right foot is to the left. And we're just kind of bringing yourself a little bit more into that outer hip stretch. From here, supine pigeon variation. We're gonna bring ourselves into half happy baby. So grab your right big toe and open that right knee out to the side and ground yourself through the left hip. Maintain that strong core, one more breath. Good. Now as you exhale, bring that right leg again to the left into that supine pigeon and bring your arms in front of the shin bone. So here you have to engage a little bit of your own awareness to bring that left, right foot a little bit closer to the body. Draw the belly in, lift the chest up. And as you come into your forearms, we're bringing the forearms so the right foot is hooking into that left forearm. And this is what it's like, like a pattern, uh, this, this variation of uh, flying pigeon on your back. I think it's called Ekapada Galavasana. I have to double check my notes. Good, and then release. That's not easy. If it was challenge on your back, imagine how it's on your hands. So take your time here to really understand the mechanics on what needs to be engaged and what doesn't need to be engaged, which pretty much everything is engaged. <laughs> So take your time here, extend that right leg. We're gonna try that again, and I'm gonna try to give you, uh, we're gonna try that again, and I'm gonna give you a different angle. So stay on your back, hug the left knee into the chest, and we're gonna cross it over to the right. So we're doing that supine pigeon, all right? So I'm going to maybe grab my right arm around my left foot, and. Just kind of pretend that I'm rocking my baby here. You're gonna feel a deep stretch on the inner thigh, outer hip, be kind here, respecting your body's boundary. And now continue hogging that left thigh into the chest, belly in, lift in the chest. The arms are coming in front. And I'm gonna hook that left foot into my right arm and then Pretend I'm doing that Eka Paragalavasana, I think it is. And then release. Good. Now, a different angle, if you want to take a look while you're resting, because we're going to try this again. I'm going to give you 
I'm gonna give you my my head so you get to see me vertically with my head facing you so you get a better look of what I'm doing. Maybe I should have wear lighter pants. <laughs> so imagine my legs are extended. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna place my leg there because I don't have space. But I'm bringing my right knee out to the side and I'm bringing my leg in front of it. So this foot is hooking into that left forearm. So I've got to keep it as, as high in my arm as possible and pretend I'm doing the chaturanga frame here. So this is what we're trying to do on our backs. And so same thing on the other side, right? We're bringing that knee out, heel in, shin bone parallel to the front of your mat, arm in front of the shin bone, hook that left foot into the right forearm, which is hard. And then you are like this. All right, so do that on each side for a moment. And you probably are like, what are we doing? It all makes sense pretty soon. <laughs> One more breath on each side, and then we're gonna meet on our seated position. Take your time. Good. Now from the seated position, let's go into our tabletop. Let's do cat cow. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, round and push. Two more rounds, inhale. Exhale. So we have prepared the body for what's coming. Go into your downward facing dog, inhale. Stay here, exhale. Inhale, feet together, look forward. As you exhale, walk or jump to the top of the mat, inhale, chair pose. And you can do a gentle chair pose, doesn't have to be that extreme. And as you come into the chair pose, I'm gonna face you now, we're gonna cross the right leg on top of the left thigh. So we're doing once again, the pigeon. And here's where we're gonna get deeper in the chair, okay? All right, so as we get deeper into our chair means that your gaze is down on the floor, you're finding stability. You're trying to drop the pelvis a little lower, drop the pelvis back. And then you're bringing your fingertips on top of the floor or, the, of the floor, or you can have some blocks where you can rest your hands on top of the block. But the idea here is to bring the chest as close down to the shin bone so you can bring your upper arms back in front, exactly what we were doing on the on the floor right now so blocks in any position to support you or not blocks at all it's your call depend on where your body's at hook that right foot into the left upper arm keep pressing the pelvis back and down good and then slowly come all the way up extend and release and we're going to do that on the other side on your chair inhale so you exhale, we're gonna shift the weight into that right leg. So we're crossing that left leg here. Give yourself a moment to find stability. And once again, the lower the hips, right? The more you gotta press the knees back, arms in front of it, and we're hooking that left foot into the right forearm. Once again, hands on blocks or fingertips. One more inhale. Good, and then slowly release. Come all the way up. We're gonna do that one more time. And this time I'm gonna face you forward. So you get to see what it needs to look on the front. So you have a little bit more um, an idea of how to place your physical body into the pose. So feet separated as wide as the hips. We're gonna bend the knees, chair pose. We're gonna cross the right leg on top of the left, press the knee out and press your hips forward and back. Then you bring the chest a little lower, pelvis a little lower, 
hands in front of you and that left foot is gonna the right foot is gonna hop hook 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 back it's like deep flexing into that left upper arm all right now bring your right elbow outside your right arch of the foot for that gentle twist extend your right arm down or place it on the block and open that left arm sit deeper one inhale exhale release that twist stay low hands on the knees and ankle and then press to come all the way up that is not easy so if it was challenge, acknowledge, regroup how you are treating yourself in the practice. And let's try it again. This is all about having fun. This is all about having awareness. And this is just a very complex and fun, fun arm balance that I just kind of want to share with you. Whatever happens, happens. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to fly today, okay? That's the whole point. Take it easy, take it easy. So now, chair pose again. Left leg cross. Come a little deeper and lower. This creates a lot of stability. You need to have balance and focus. When ready, blocks or not blocks, we're gonna drop our upper arms into the shin bone. We're gonna lock that left foot and stay here. Find your stability, core strong. Left elbow outside your left arch of the foot extend the arms and open the chest to the right keep lowering the pelvis breathe in slowly release the arm down hands into ankle and knee and then press come all the way up good shake your legs shake the hips <laughs> Let's go into the front of the mat, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. As you exhale, prepare yourself here for Malasana again. If you need any props to support your heels, sitting on the block, adjust. Separate the feet as wide as you can, knees and toes slightly pointing out in the same direction. And as you bring the palms together in the center of the chest, it's going to help you to elongate the spine and drop the pelvis even lower so your crown of the head is straight up. Okay, we're going to do a crow pose, a kasana variation if you need to adjust or add any props. The variation for crow pose is on your back. Variation of crows is seated if you do not want to do on the arms, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, highly recommend you check the series, How to Crow. We go through all of that. I'm gonna assume we are here on the same page. So choose one of those variations and do crow for a couple breaths. I'm gonna do that three times. Choose, I'm gonna do one of each of those crows because it's three times. So I'm gonna do the first one on my back and go for it. Do your crow for three breaths. and then release that crow, go back into that malasana if you were doing it on your hands. If you were doing it on your back, stay on your back, knees hop to the chest. Good, second round, crow on your arms, on your back, or seated when you're ready. Big toes touch, knees apart on the seated, it's almost like doing a child's pose, seated child's pose. This time we're gonna bring the upper arms inside the knees and push, push and squeeze. Two more breaths. And then release, if you're doing the city, come into Baddha Konasana. If you're on your back, knees to the chest. And if you are on your arms, come into Malasana. We all have different options here. Keep the breath nice and easy. Good. 
The third round, once again, back, seated, or all the way into the arms. So when you're ready, nice and slow, get in there. We're gonna stay there for three breaths. So take your time. Take your time there. Good, and then slowly we're gonna come all the way to seat it. We're gonna come into a supine twist, come into your back, cross the right leg to the left, open your right arm. Oh, let this feel good at this point of the practice. We've been using a lot of strength. So let this part of the practice feel good on the stretching. Settle the mind, settle the breath. And just let the body settle here for a moment. And then slowly come back to center. We're gonna switch side. We're gonna cross the left leg to the right. Open in that left arm. Ground yourself through the shoulders, softening that breath as much as possible. And slowly come back to center, nice and slow. We're gonna bring a blanket or a block under our sacrum. We're gonna stretch the front of the pelvis because we've been strength strengthening a lot. Um, so lift and place your blanket or block right on the sacrum area, below the lower back and a little bit higher than your mid glute in here. Make sure you feel comfortable and then extend the leg one at a time or both at a time, arms overhead and allow this stretch to feel right in the front of the body. Relaxing the breath. I'm gonna stay here for three more breaths, nice and slow, relaxing, grounding yourself, being in the moment. Feel the hips, adjust whatever you need to adjust. One more breath. And then slowly you're gonna bend the knees, release the hands by your side, come all the way to your back. Good, and then you're gonna roll into your belly. Oops, got that blurry there, hopefully. I always have to like wave my hands to get the camera clear. Good. Come all the way to your belly and come into your forearms for a little bit supine um, back bend. Not supine back bend, my bad. Um, we're, we're on our belly stretching uh, 
the abdomen and strengthening the spine a little bit. So things for a moment, just let this feel good. Bend your right knee and bring it forward and out to the side. So it's almost like you're kicking the leg and toes out and draw the right hip slightly down. Just kind of stretch a little bit the, the inner thigh on the right side. What we did was very intense. So what I'm trying to do is give your body some nice balance so you don't feel energetically depleted and your body doesn't feel out of balance for so much strength. This is a nice way to counteract all that yin uh, and yang um, part of the practice. A little bit more mindful here today. So come back to center and then release that right leg back and then bending that left knee forward open out, drop that left thigh a little bit more, and you're welcome to walk the hands slightly to the right. Just three breaths here. Good. and then slowly come back to center, release that leg down and press into your child's pose now. Knees separated, feet together and chest in between the thigh, hands forward. Release the forehead. Just give yourself a moment here to kind of feel that gentle stretch of the lower back and the inner thigh. Good, and then slowly come all the way up. We're gonna bring the knees out to the side. We're gonna hop the knees into our chest. I'm gonna come into the happy baby. So this practice feels sometimes perhaps a little bit more tutorial, a little bit more mellow, but the idea is for you to slowly understand the position of the hips and warm up those hips because sometimes we are tight on the hips and coming into these type of poses in order to make it doable and sustainable, we need to dedicate the time to warm up the hips and warm up the lower back and the upper back. So for next week, we for sure are gonna do a little bit less of these warm ups, and we're gonna do more into the strengthen and the core and the flow. But I just wanted to take it today uh, as a mellow practice to break it down to you. Good, from here, nice and slow, release the feet on the ground. We're gonna do bridge pose, continue strength, stretching the front of the legs. So lift the chest, tuck the shoulder blades in, hands on your side, you can grab the ankle joints, you can release the palms on the floor or interlace the fingers underneath you. When you're ready, lifting the hips, keeping the gaze straight up. Two more breaths. Lift the hips a little higher. And then exhale, slowly release. Feet as well as the mat, knees resting against each other. We're gonna try two more rounds of that. Once again, inhale, come into your bridge. Three breaths. Any variation you can play here. And keeping the knees and toes pointing in the same direction, knees forward, and then slowly hips down. We have one more round. Take your time to recover the breath. Sometimes holding the breath is something that we do, but try to be mindful on the next time and keep that breath flowing. When you're ready, as you inhale, lifting the hips up, find your reach pose and stay here for three breaths.
and slowly release the pelvis down. Knees to the chest, big circle with the knees, let it feel good in the hip socket. We're gonna take a nice deserving Shavasana here, or you can go into your meditation seated position, whichever of the two feels more appropriate. I personally gonna go into that meditation and we're gonna stay here for about three minutes. So allow this moment to settle the body into all that strength that we were working. Notice the hips. So wherever you are, whether you are meditating, whether you are in Shavasana for three minutes, I'm just gonna walk you briefly into a body scan so you can relax a little deeper and then I'll give you some brief moment of silence, okay? Settle into your legs and feet. Relaxing the pelvis. And just soften your belly. Soften your chest. Shoulders relax. Palms and fingers and arms completely relax. Face is relaxed, your jaw is relaxed. Your head feels relaxed. Your eyes are relaxed. Just let your breath continue diving into a deeper state of relaxation for your whole body to drop and feel safe and supported. For a brief moment of silence, for just be. Take a moment here to slowly reconnect to your breath. Start moving your fingers and your toes if you're in Shavasana and take your time slowly to meet us in the seated meditation position. Once again, take your time, no rush. If you're in a seated meditation position, just try to bring your awareness into your whole body a little bit more present. Continue witnessing the rhythm of the breath.
And then bring your right hand into your chest and feel your heart. I want you to know that you have done the best you can today in today's practice. Whatever happened, let it be. And find some joy and appreciation for what your body is able to do. These practices are not meant to be regulated or judged into a specific outcome. These practices are designed to help you reconnect to discover the way you talk to yourself, you treat yourself, you perceive yourself, the way your body behaves. It's all about self-discovery, self-connection, self-study. So no matter what, be kind to yourself today and always. You're an amazing human being and I'm so thankful that you are here with me practicing and sharing this experience with me. Infinite gratitude and thank you so much for all you do and for who you are. I hope to see you very soon. We'll continue this series of Flying Pigeon, a fun arm balance that is necessary to prepare the body properly for it. So I hope this class gives you a little bit of the foundation of what is ahead. And keep an open mind, beginner's mind, curious mind, and uh, hope to see you very soon. Thank you.